Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Janice and I make videos on my experiences in school and in the tech industry working as an engineer in AI. And I love making videos on the different applications of machine learning and AI. And today I'm gonna to talk about some work that really opened my eyes up to the ethics of applying AI in certain scenarios. A recent discussion with a group of engineers made me realize that a lot of people in the tech industry, even if they work at an AI company and have some basic understanding of what machine learning is, they don't really understand all of the nuances of AI and how it could be used to potentially make a dangerous or undesirably biased model. Today, I wanna to talk about some work that was done by a couple of researchers who claimed that they could build a model that could predict someone's sexual orientation based off of a photo of their face, AI gaydar, if you will. I first heard about this work in a talk given by Blaise Aguera E. Arcus at Google years ago, and I think he still works at Google, but his talk was basically a critique of the work that these researchers had done, and he explained why their model was so flawed. And I will link all of the resources that I used down below. And I will go over his critique, but I first want to talk about the work that these researchers did to predict sexual orientation from face images. Their paper was published in 2016, and basically they used over 35,000 images from people's public online dating profiles in the US to build a model to differentiate between straight men, straight women, gay men, and lesbian women. Now, before I show you what they found their average straight and gay male and female faces to look like, I wanna talk a little bit about something called physiognomy. Physiognomy is basically this idea that someone's outer appearance is somehow indicative of who they are on the inside, basically judging a book by its cover. Maybe you've heard someone say that a strong jaw or a really well-defined jawline is somehow indicative of dominance or having an assertive personality or even success. That is physiognomy. It's pseudoscience, but people believe in it to different degrees. And there have been researchers, and there likely still are, who try to design and train machine learning models to somehow associate someone's physical appearance with certain behavioral or personality traits. A famous one is one where a couple of researchers thought that they could build a model to discern whether or not someone was a convicted criminal based on a photo of their face. I mean, you can imagine how dangerous this could be to use someone's physical appearance to decide criminality or sentences. It's pretty dangerous. Okay, so now back to the article. They believe that your facial structure has something to do with your sexual orientation. They showed composite images from each category, which you can kind of think of as the average straight man face, average gay man face, average straight woman face, and average lesbian woman face. They show these composites to show you what kind of data their algorithm gets. You can see there are obvious differences between all of these composite faces, which, you know, the researchers argue supports their idea that there are facial differences that give some indication of sexual orientation. Now, Blaze quickly points out that there are some really obvious superficial differences between these photos. For instance, the straight man clearly has more facial hair than the gay man. And the straight woman clearly has eyeshadow or some sort of eye makeup on, and the average lesbian does not. What this suggests is that appearance-based sexual orientation cues likely have more to do with how someone chooses to present themselves and less on actual facial structure. So Blaze and his colleagues surveyed 8,000 Americans to try to confirm patterns between preferences in how people choose to present themselves and their sexual orientation. So they asked these 8,000 people questions like, do you have a beard? Do you wear eyeshadow? Do you wear glasses? And they found that straight men are more likely to grow a beard and straight women do tend to wear more eyeshadow and gay men and women do wear glasses more often than straight men and women do. People who believe in physiognomy or people who think that you can use parts of someone's outward appearance to somehow conclude something about who they are on the inside these people might argue that straight men may just have better eyesight than gay men do. But in Blaze's survey, he asked, do you like how you look in glasses as well as do you wear glasses? And the results indicated that there was a correlation between the two, which means that whether or not a man wears glasses has a lot to do with whether or not he thinks he looks good in glasses. 
So it's a stylistic thing and not that straight men just have better eyesight. They did a similar analysis with women. Women seemed to report similar rates of having vision defects, but more straight women, particularly under the age of 40, wear contacts, meaning whether a woman chooses to wear contacts or glasses simply has to do with her aesthetic preference. In the original paper, the researchers tried to explain the relationship between these appearance differences and sexual orientation by talking about hormone exposure as a fetus. The beard, for instance, they claim that the reason why gay men are less likely to grow beards could be due to underexposure to male hormones when they're in their mother's womb. And they claim that that gives gay men a more feminine look, which includes just having less facial hair. However, Blaze's survey and analysis shows that it's more about stylistic trends and cultural norms. Even for differences in skin tone, the original researchers tried to say that the male hormone of testosterone stimulates a certain biological process that leads to darker skin. Blaze's survey found that straight men do tend to report having tanned skin more often than gay men do, but straight men are also more likely to work outside, which could explain why they're tanner. Basically, none of their results proved that there was any physiological basis for sexual orientation. Another interesting point that the original researchers tried to make was that face shape is also an indicator of sexual orientation. More masculine traits would be a larger jaw, shorter noses, smaller foreheads, whereas more feminine traits would be smaller jaws, longer noses, and larger foreheads. If you look at the composite images, the gay men and straight women have more feminine traits, and the straight men and lesbian women have more masculine traits. Blaze says if you look, the nostrils of straight men are actually larger than the nostrils for gay men, and the nostrils of straight women look smaller than the nostrils for lesbian women, which tells you something about the camera angle people were using to take their portraits or selfies for their dating profiles. So what probably happens is that straight men like to take selfies from slightly below because it makes them look more dominant or taller, but the effect is that it makes their jaws look larger and their noses look shorter and their foreheads look smaller. Straight women, on the other hand, might tend to shoot their selfies from above because it makes their forehead and eyes look bigger and their jaws look smaller. Blaze also says that if you control for head pose, lighting, glasses, and makeup, among other things, even humans can't reliably predict what someone's sexual orientation is based off of their appearance. However, if we can get some sense of how someone chooses to present themselves, then we can start to make more accurate judgments because of something called social signaling, which is basically where we give indications about who we are based on how we choose to present ourselves, probably because we want to fit in with a particular group or attract a certain kind of attention. To summarize, Differences that we can physically observe that could help us differentiate between people of different sexual orientations, differences such as makeup, facial hair, glasses, tanness, even face shape as an effect of selfie angle. These things relate directly to how people choose to present themselves and differences in culture and not to facial structure or physiology. The survey asking 8,000 people a series of yes or no questions was able to differentiate between people of different sexual orientations as well as the AI-driven gaydar model. This highlights a really important point about AI, that it's a general purpose technology that can be used to automate so many different tasks, including tasks that should not be undertaken at all. AI is extremely powerful and capable of helping us understand patterns in human behavior and culture, but it can also expose and highlight certain stereotypes and biases that we might unconsciously be making. What this means is we just have to be more aware of our own stereotypes and biases, and we have to be more conscious about how we hold ourselves accountable in making social progress. As always, I'll provide the links to everything I referenced as well as other relevant articles in the description box below. I hope hearing about this application of AI got you to think a little bit more about your own biases as well as about the capabilities and limitations of computers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. 
Oh boy.